Hello, my name is Rebecca McGuire and I'm a lecturer in the Department of Psychology. One question which is often asked of psychologists is whether we can read people's minds. Unfortunately, you might be disappointed to know that this is not the case. So if you're interested in pursuing a degree in psychology so that you can actually analyse people and understand their minds, you might be disappointed. However, we do try to understand the human mind. If you look at the definition of psychology, it's the scientific study of mind and behaviour. So in trying to answer this question, what is the mind? We have to use research techniques. So it is a science to understand the mind in more detail. In psychology, if you think about what we try to do, we try to answer a number of questions about the mind and behaviour. So to give you some really broad general overviews of questions that might be asked, this might include basically how does the mind work? So psychologists are often concerned with understanding neurological and cognitive processes to really get an understanding of how the mind functions. A very important question here to ask is how can we actually measure the mind? So a lot of what you would study if you pursued a degree in psychology is research methods and research techniques. So we could, for example, measure the mind by asking people questions to self-report on their mental processes, or we could potentially do experiments where we get people to do things. We could also look at using neuroscientific techniques to maybe understand the underlying neurological processes and brain structures that people engage when, they, when they're trying to carry out cognitive processes. But another question that you might be interested in, in answering, and this is something which I'll talk about in a moment, can we actually trust our minds? So just to um, go back to the very first question on the previous slide, how does the mind work? Well, at its most basic level, the mind works by using knowledge. Now, cognitive psychology is um, a, a subdiscipline of psychology, which I'm interested in, and this studies the mental processes involved in how people acquire, how people store, and how people use their knowledge. So that's what cognitive psychology is. And as you might be aware, we have lots of different cognitive processes. So to give you an overview of some of these, perception is a very important cognitive process. So taking in information from the world and then paying attention to some of that information. Memory, you're probably aware, is one of the most fundamental and important cognitive processes. But we have many others too. Here's some other examples. Problem solving and that might lead into studies of expertise. Language as well, a very important cognitive process. Cognitive psychologists would also understand and try to um, look into how people form concepts. Mental imagery is another important process. Decision making and reasoning. So these are just some of the cognitive processes which we use every day. We can break these down further to think about the, how we use, how we acquire, how we store and we use our knowledge. So perception and attention really are processes which are fundamental in allowing us to acquire knowledge. So the process of acquisition. Memory is involved in storing our knowledge, obviously. The others we can think about, these are all examples of how we use our knowledge in everyday life. So if you were studying a degree in psychology, you would be introduced to some of these processes in some more detail. One thing which I'll just talk about now is the fundamental difference between perception and sensation. So perception, as we saw on the previous slide, it's a very important process which allows us to acquire new knowledge. But perception isn't the same as simply sensing information. So you're all familiar with the five senses or the, there's possibly more senses, but senses like vision, hearing, taste, touch, smell. These are our senses, but 
how we actually perceive information is slightly different to these sensations that we actually receive. To look at this diagram here, if you think about um, in the outside world, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of lights, sounds, etc. And we have the ability to transform this, we, we might say, raw data into, um, into data that can be actually picked up by the brain. Okay, so we have a number of sensory receptors and then this can be transmitted into a neural form, which goes up to our brain um, in a very simplistic way, I'm describing it here. But what we actually experience from our own perspective, we experience perceptions. So this is how we interpret the raw data that we receive. So I'm going to give you some examples now which illustrate how your sensation differs to your perception. So first of all, if you look at this slide here, you might have the experience of seeing motion here. You might see that these circles are moving, but actually, if you fixate on any part of this image, you will see that this is actually not moving. This is just a two-dimensional two static image. But there are parts of our physiology and the way in which we pick up light and shade and colours which are causing us to perceive motion here. So that's just a very simple example. That's known as the peripheral drift illusion. This is quite um, a dramatic illusion here. When you look at this picture, you will see probably a checkerboard. And if I get you to focus on the squares A and B, now A and B, if I was to ask you, are they the same colors or are they not? You would probably say, no, they look different to me. But in fact, these are actually the same shades. Now I've extracted A and B here and I can show you them side by side. A and B, they are in fact the same. This is known as the checkerboard illusion. And you can check this yourself. You can, you know, you can screenshot this and you can zoom in um, and you can look at it for yourself. They are in fact the same, A and B are the same. But there's something about how we perceive this that they, they appear to us radically different. They do not appear to be the same. And in psychology, we're, you know, we'd be interested in trying to understand why is this the case? It could be something to do with our experience in the world and the expectations that we have about things like light and shadow and chessboards and the like. So there are a number of other factors aside from the raw sensation and sensory experience that we're picking up that influence how we perceive. Here's just another example of how sensation differs to perception. So in this image here, when you look at these cars in the context of the road, it appears that the one furthest away is much bigger. But you can see again that these are exactly the same size. And you might be familiar from looking at online and, and um, images and trends that come up now and again on social media. There are many examples of visual illusions like this. There's an even more simple example here. I could get you to, you know, tell me how many triangles do you see here? So you would probably start counting them. Um, but actually, when you think about it, there are no triangles in this image at all. So what we are doing, what our mind naturally does is we tend to fill in the gaps. And this is an, this was something which was investigated by a bunch of psychologists in the early 20th century known as Gestalt psychologists. And they talk about these principles of closure that we tend to try and naturally when we're perceiving things, we try to perceive things in the simplest form possible. So this is just a nice, simple illustration of that. Another example, if I got you to look at this blob here. So imagine this is a blurred image. It's, it's like somebody has taken a photograph, um, but it's pixelated. And if I asked you to try and guess what it is, you could think about yourself, what is it? And you might, you probably won't have a clue or you might have a number of different guesses. Now, when you see this in context, you probably will start to understand what it, what it is. So in this picture here, you might say, well, that's, that, that looks like a bottle. In this picture here, you might say that looks like 
a shoe. And in this one here, you might say, see that you can look at like a car and a person. Well, in all cases, this is the same blob, which is quite dramatic. And, and this was, you know, researched the paper um, looking at this was called multiple personalities of a blob. So really our perception works by seeing things in a wider context. So sometimes it might be hard for us to recognize individual images if they're pixelated like this, but when we see them in the broader picture, it's a lot easier. So looking at things like this tells us a lot about how, how perceptual mechanisms actually work. So to conclude from looking at these examples, the knowledge that we build up about the world and our expectations clearly influence the perceptions um, that we have of the world. So when we perceive things, it's heavily driven by our knowledge and expectations. There's also many other examples and research studies looking at this in other areas, such as how we pay attention. So the kind of things we pay attention to, for example, might be influence what we're expecting to see and what we're expecting to observe on our previous knowledge. They might also influence things like how we solve problems. So the strategy that we might adopt to solving a problem is probably going to be influenced by our own experience of things in the past as well. So in cognitive psychology, we try to investigate these and other areas. Of course, this is just one example of a, of a subdiscipline in psychology. There is a lot more to psychology than that. But the message really we can, we can take from these examples is that the mind can sometimes play tricks on you. Um, so, you know, you see clever pictures like this that show you mightn't always trust your eyes and what you see. You might want to think outside the box. However, it is important to note that generally our perceptual abilities and our cognitive abilities and processes um, serve us quite well in, every, in the everyday world. So even though we sometimes might make mistakes, generally our perceptual abilities have evolved to enable us to adapt to our environment quite well. So if you are interested in these kind of areas and you want to learn more, you might consider applying for our psychology programmes here in Maynooth. Regardless of what psychology programme you choose, you would be exposed to areas like this and others. So that was cognitive psychology. So as you might have seen in, in another um, open day talk, which gives an overview of our programmes, we have the BA in psychology here, the BSc in psychology, which are the pure psychology programmes, and the BA arts double major in psychological studies. So um, thank you for listening to this talk. I wish you best, the best in your future career planning. And perhaps um, we might see some of you in person, hopefully, um, in September or October or maybe November. Um, thank you for your time and attention.